Greenland! We've made it to the end of season one. We've made a lot of memories, haven't we? I I've watched untold hours of movies, been threatened, mutated, spidered, and nearly made love to an alien. Don't know where, don't know where, but I know will be again some sunny day. I have consumed so much monster and gummy bears that I'm peeing colors that are unknown to man. And now, now we reach a movie with one of the greatest monsters of all time. He is an inspiration to many a man and gorilla. I am your cousin Bobby, and tonight we watch King Kong Escapes. When it comes to such a storied monster, th there is a lot of background. So before we get to how Toho, Ishiro Honda, and Godzilla are wrapped up in this movie's story, let's go back a bit. One of King Kong's creators, Marion C. Cooper, always had a fascination with gorillas. When he was a child, he had a copy of zoologist Paul Duchayu's Explorations and Adventures in Equatorial Africa. In one passage, Duchayu encountered a gorilla he described as a hellish dream creature. So with that in mind, and a burgeoning filmmaking career, Cooper started work at RKO and started working on King Kong with producer Ernest B. Shodashak and special effects wizard Willis O'Brien. For our purposes, we're going to leap to the part where the movie was a huge success and left a huge imprint on the American culture. So, now we go to Japan. We have Toho, a studio that specialized in kaijus, which if you don't know, and I'll go ahead and assume you don't, is the Japanese term for large monsters. It has come to mean Japanese films with giant monsters, like Godzilla or Mothra, Though really, it applies to any giant monster from any country. So King Kong was a kaiju before he came to Japan. <coughs> Toho licensed Kong to appear side by side with their most popular monster in 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla. Toho purchased a King Kong vs. Frankenstein script from producer John Beck and replaced Frankenstein with Godzilla in order to celebrate their 30th anniversary. There's a myth that there were two endings, one shot for America where King Kong wins, and another shot for Japan where Godzilla wins. This is not true, and perhaps came from the actual Japanese ending, where both King Kong and Godzilla's roars were heard at the end of the movie which were intended as the Beast's Curtain Call. In fact, Kong was the bigger draw in Japan at the time and was always intended to be the winner. So the film was a huge success, and Toho wanted to stay in the King Kong business. In 1966, they wanted to produce King Kong vs. Ebera with Rankin Bass Productions, the production company behind those famous stop-motion Christmas specials. You know dang well what stop-motion Christmas specials I'm talking about. However, Rankin Bass backed out because director Ishiro Honda was unavailable. So Toho went ahead with Ebera, but inserted Godzilla, and Rankin Bass created an animated King Kong series. In 1967, Honda became available, and the two companies produced the classic we will be watching tonight. It features not only King Kong, but Gorosaurus and Mechanicong as well. So strap in and prepare yourselves for a kaiju triple threat. It's time for King Kong Escapes.
Okay, time for some background on the great Ishiro Honda. Born May 7, 1911 in Yamagata Prefecture, Honda was not only known for his tokusatsu and kaiju films, but also as the preeminent Godzilla director. He worked on eight Godzilla movies, from the first one in 1954 to Terror of Mechagodzilla in 1975. Honda was also a frequent collaborator with the legendary Akira Kurosawa and allegedly directed one of the segments in the auteur's 1990 film, Dreams. We'll be right back to B-Movie Mayhem here on TV20. Another Godzilla mainstay that we should talk about is special effects wizard Eiji Tsuburaya. While working on Godzilla, he created Suitmation. There was more to the process than just putting a dude in a rubber suit. By combining intense lighting with high-speed filming, he added a weightiness to the monsters in his films. Now back to King Kong Escapes. B-Movie Mayhem fans, it's time for Cousin Bobby's Worldwide Famous Kaiju Quartet. We have Bryce Norton as Gigantosaurus, Elliot Stone as Big Flyboy, Doug Phil as Gorilla Grom. and Trish Metzger as Big Bad Martha. You're my kind of kaiju. You stomped into my heart, my kind of kaiju. Now we'll never be apart. They say you're big and you're green, but to me, you're not mean, no. Girl, they say you're a large lizard monster, and that large lizard monster has experienced no love, only rage. But baby, that doesn't matter to me. What we have is true love. I'm not even sure you have lips, but if you did, I would kiss them all night long. My kind of kaiju. You destroyed Tokyo, my kind of kaiju. But you'll never hurt me, no. Oh, oh. 
We'll be right back. Open-minded people. The spirit of innovation. Passion. Action. Rock and roll! Cleveland. 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 We are Cleveland. We are Cleveland! the Tokyo Sky Tree in three bites? I don't know how anyone can be mad. That's impressive. <laughs> Welcome back to B Movie Mayhem here on TV20. I hope you're all enjoying King Kong Escapes as much as me and my monstrous buds here are. Back to the movie. Is Prue's Khan still on the island? Yeah, I think he's still here. At a recent Donnybrook. He must be near here someplace. Shut up. Let's see how your hero likes you when you're disfigured a little bit. Let's see what the ice will do to your lovely skin. Hmm? No. Uh, no. Uh, that. Let's talk about some of the different sizes between the original King Kong and the two Toho Kongs. In the original movie, Kong was anywhere from 18 to 60 feet, depending on the shot. Marion Cooper and Willis O'Brien would change his height depending on what the scene called for. In King Kong vs. Godzilla, he was scaled up to 148 feet so that he could match up with the big green guy. That Kong was also able to use electricity to give himself strength. In tonight's movie, though, Toho scaled him to 60 feet, making for a much more intimate ape affair. We'll be right back with more here on B Movie Mayhem. Why is Doctor Who so bad at this evil scientist thing? Every single one of his plans have failed spectacularly. 
Why is this country that the movie will not name, but is probably China, willing to pay him the millions required to run this operation? Send your theories to CousinBobby216 at gmail.com. Remember to mark your email as OK to read if you want it read on air. Now time for the action-packed conclusion to King Kong Escapes. No. No. So then. With Doctor Who meeting a grisly end and Kong headed back to Mondo Island to find peace, it's time for the Bobby score. We have one star for a drop kicking dinosaur, one star for Kong hypnosis, one star for having Doctor Who wear a cape that looks like he bought it directly from the villain store, and one star for King Kong going <laughs> bananas on the ship at the end. <laughs> That's a total of four stars. Cousin Bobby says, that is indeed my kind of kaiju. Uh, today, we close as always with this metal moment. <laughs> so we all know the greatest song about a kaiju, right? Godzilla by Blue Oyster Cult is one of the band's most popular songs. Though when it was first released as a single in February 1978, it failed to reach the charts. A guitarist Buck Dharma was a fan of monster movies, and when he came up with the riff, it made him think of Godzilla. So from there, he wrote the lyrics that describe a day in the life of the big green guy. This song has been covered by many bands, including Fu Manchu, Racer X, Smashing Pumpkins, Sebastian Bach, and Serge Tankian. Uh, if you haven't heard it, just turn on a classic rock station and wait a couple minutes. Well, Cleveland, that's all we have for season one of B Movie Mayhem. Remember to email me at CousinBobby216 at gmail.com and to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A big thanks to TV20 and the City of Cleveland for giving us this opportunity to share a couple hours of weirdness every night. A huge thanks to the TV20 crew, our graphic designer Jeff, and all of the actors and interviewees who have appeared on camera. None of them received any compensation for the work they did, except for mine and Pat's undying gratitude. And of course, thanks to all of you who watched and shared this show. The biggest thanks goes to my production partner and brother, Pat Longbreak. I'm just a sort of funny schmuck who knows a couple things about movies. Pat is the real brains of this operation. Thank you for being a friend. That's enough with the sentiment. Let's close this out with the way we started, with a goofy and awkward bit. Come on over, Kaiju Quartet. Let's finish with a heartwarming song. What's, what's up, guys? Okay, guys, guys, I told you, I told you. The check is in the mail. Okay, okay, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. That monster and the gummy bears from earlier, that was your pay. <laughs> guys? Guys, what are you? Oh, oh no! Ow, oh God, oh God, oh no! No, oh God!